Hey y'all, welcome back to another hunting ammo ballistics gel test. We've got a classic deer load here. Normal white tail, 150 grain soft point and 308 Winchester. And here's the box for that normal white tail, 150 grain soft point, 308 Winchester load. Let's flip it around to the back. Here is your promo information. Feel free to stop, pause, and read all that if you would like. Something I do like to point out is if the manufacturer sort of lists the intended game species, and this does have some icons, so it says medium game. They've got an icon of a deer, bear, elk, wild hog. I'm not quite sure I would use a 150 grain soft point 308 load on elk, but certainly it would do the job on white-tailed deer and wild hogs. Regardless, let's flip it around and take a look at their velocity information. Right here, feet per second, zero yards, 2,789 feet per second is what we're aiming for. We'll see how close we get to that out of the 22 inch barrel of my Ruger American. And we'll go ahead and open it up and take a look at the ammo. Now something interesting, a lot of people don't know, these Norma ammo holders, they're like a polymer plastic type stuff. Apparently you can use these as an emergency fire starter. I saw a video on Norma's YouTube channel, pretty cool. Also, you can crack them in half just like that and have five rounds ready to slip in your pack or your pocket. It's actually pretty darn handy. But let's go ahead and pop one out and take a look. Norma brass and ammo always looks really, really clean across calibers. If you're looking for brass to reload and you wanna shoot some stuff first, Norma might be the way to go. Anyway, here it is, just your simple 150 grain soft point 308 load. Let's go shoot it and see how it does. And my test rifle today is my Ruger American Standard, chambered in 308 Winchester, of course. It has a 22 inch barrel. I did have it threaded so I could use a Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 suppressor. And coming on back, I've got it topped off with a Vortex Diamondback 4 to 16 by 42 scope. Definitely helps see the gel blocks down there. And of course, I've got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs on the buttstock. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would love to make you one. And I've also got one of my super thick Latigo leather slings on there. Those are also available on my website. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you my whitetail deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here are those velocities for the Norma Whitetail 150 grain load in 308. We had a minimum of 28.28, a max of 28.61 for an average of 28.41, and a spread of 32.5 feet per second. Definitely not the worst I've seen. And we are down at the blocks after shooting that Norma Whitetail 150 grain soft point load out of the 308. We did capture all three bullets. We had very consistent penetration. Let's go ahead and go over that first. There's the shallowest bullet right there. Looks like we got about 18 inches, 19 inches, and we'll call it 19 and a half. Very tight little penetration range there. And it does look like we got some very good expansion on these. It looks like they held together for the most part as well. A little bit surprising for just a cup and core lead and copper bullet coming on over to the first block. Actually, let me go over to the other side. I think we can see the wound channel better from over here. It looks like it starts opening up at about the two inch mark. We have our big cavity right here coming on back, tapering off by about the 10 inch mark. Now the wound cavity in here, that's three of them that are more or less side by side, isn't as explosive as some other ammo. For example, Federal Fusion creates a much you know, more explosive wound cavity. I think what happens or what this means, and this is just a theory, is that the bullets aren't expanding as rapidly. They're expanding more slowly just over the course of that cavity as opposed to just all at once. But again, that's just a theory. Unfortunately, I don't have a $100,000 camera where I could slow it down enough where we could actually see that. But regardless, let's go ahead and dig these out and take 
take a look. All right, so we've dug those 150 grain normal whitetail bullets out of the ballistics gel blocks. We've got them right here. Let's go ahead and hit all the metrics. First, we're gonna talk about weight retention. We saw 129, 130, and 130 grains for an average of about 130 grains weight retention. That's 86% retained weight. And honestly, for a cheap cup and core lead and copper bullet, I'm pretty darn pleased with that, especially considering how they held together. They mushroomed really well. We'll talk about expansion next. And so moving on to expansion, we saw 0 0.68, 0 0.7, and 0.74 inches respectively for an average of 0.71 inches expanded diameter. And that works out to 2.3x expansion. And just take a look at those bullets here. They expanded very uniformly. It's not, you know, a jagged piece here or there that's creating that large expansion number. It's the whole thing creating a nice wide 2.3x wound track all the way around. So excellent performance there, I think. And then on to velocity, our high velocity was 2861. Our low was 2829 for an average of 2841 versus the factory build velocity of 2,789 feet per second. So for everybody who says in the comments, and I'm sure it's happened, oh, you've got a slow barrel in some of the other ammo tests where the ammo didn't measure up to its box spec, this stuff came in 52 feet per second fast. Some ammo just isn't loaded the way that it should be. Other ammo is, and some of it seems like it's a bit hot like this stuff. So definitely pleased with velocity. And now I'm going to throw in a new metric that I've started doing, impact velocity. So the velocity of the bullet is going down there at 100 yards on impact. And I use a mathematical formula to calculate this. So it is an estimate, but it's very close to what it would actually be. I don't have another chronograph down there at 100 yards, but we're gonna be close. The impact velocity of this ammo at 100 yards is about 2,642 feet per second. So that's how fast it's hitting the blocks and causing the bullets to do what they did. And on a penetration, we saw 18 inches, 19 inches, and 19 and a half inches of penetration for an average of about 19 inches of penetration. And that's right there close to the 20 inch mark I like to see for medium game, you know, white tail deer type hunting. I think this stuff did excellent penetration wise for what it is, which is a cheap 150 grain lead and copper bullet. And then real quick kinetic energy with a 150 grain bullet going on average 2,841 feet per second, nice and fast this stuff was, we're looking at 2,688 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. All right, y'all, so it's time for my final thoughts on this Norma Whitetail 150 grain 308 load. I think the stuff did excellent for what it is. This is a very budget ammo. It's a 150 grain soft point copper and lead bullet. It's not, at least supposedly not bonded. Didn't act like it was bonded. It expanded extremely well. It held the vast majority of its weight together. Velocity was through the roof. We beat box spec by quite a bit and penetration was right there in line with something I would like to use for whitetail deer hunting, other common medium game. All in all, for what it is, I think this stuff performed excellent and I would not hesitate to use it on whitetail deer, wild hogs, stuff like that. If I were hunting, you know, larger medium game, getting into the large game category, I would definitely want something that penetrates a bit deeper, holds together a bit more. But for what this stuff is, and honestly what it's called, it's called whitetail, it's right on the box. I think it's perfect, it did great. So if you've used this ammo or are considering it, let me and everybody else know in the comments what you think about it. And check out my website, masonleather.com and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment, or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.